Tonight, a tribute in Paris. The lights of the Eiffel Tower turned off in memory of the victims of the terror attack. Quite a sight. And tonight, French police are still searching for the gunman who killed 12 people in the offices of a satirical newspaper. And we've just learned that the suspects have been on the U.S. no-fly list for years. Right. And two men who resemble the brothers identified as the attackers robbed a gas station northeast of Paris today. And that is where police now are concentrating their search. In Paris, 800 extra police officers are out on patrol and on guard for any other possible attacks. Now, the attack shocked people worldwide and generated waves of sympathy from others who used satire to mock the establishment, as Ken McLeod shows us. I was heartsick. Like many cartoonists around the world, Dan Wasserman answered the slaughter of his Paris brethren at the drawing table. The idea that, that cartoonists were being killed for what they drew was just shocking. So as police overseas hunted the gunman suspected of murdering a dozen people for lampooning radical Islam, Wasserman took aim with his pen. You can't give people veto power over your, your thinking and your expression. The result was this cartoon defending free expression from the assault of Islamic fundamentalism with the normal tools of Wasserman's trade, satire and ridicule, transforming the ink bottle into the think bottle. That's the struggle and, and I don't think there's a lot of gray area in there. Which is perhaps why his newspaper, The Globe, took the extraordinary step of topping their editorial page with it. Nobody asked me to go easy, soften it up, remove the mention of Muhammad, none of that. But newspapers like The Globe and cartoonists worldwide certainly feel the shock waves from Paris, a clear signal that Islamic militants are willing and able to strike specific targets that offend them. Wasserman does not want to be shot dead in his cluttered office. You have to balance that against the fact that you think you're doing something uh, useful in stimulating debate. Of course, cartooning and controversy are bedfellows because when you craft political and religious zingers for a living, you offend. The problem is some people think that when you offend them, you're oppressing them. They can't make that distinction. Still, Wasserman is vowing to go back to the drawing board unbowed. In Boston, Ken McLeod, WBZ News.